what is up guys how are you guys doing so a few days back i had announced a new series for solidity i had announced that i'll be teaching solidity on youtube so this is the first video for the solidity series now we'll be starting from the very basic right and we'll be building all our knowledge up to the place where we'll be able to build our own nft platforms so you remember that a few days back i was talking about building uh, our own nft platform here on this youtube channel but then a lot of people told me that hey we don't know even know the basics of solidity or even how, how to make smart contracts how would we even build an nft platform so that got me thinking why don't i teach solidity first like from the really basic starting from the basics to you know advanced solidity and then we'll use all our learnings in a different playlist and we'll build using react and go and all those different things we'll build our own nft platform so this series this playlist is only concerned with learning solidity okay we'll uh, we'll learn everything to do with solidity now you'll see me on the bottom right of your screen and uh, a lot of people get troubled by that sometimes they think that hey uh, you know we're not able to see the screen you're you're, you're there on the screen uh, but guys uh, i'm all, all only there in the bottom right uh, side of the uh, of the screen right all the things that you would need to focus on uh, the things that i'll be talking about at that particular point of time would be at the on the in the middle of the screen so don't worry if you can't see something when when it's the bottom right it's hidden behind me i won't be talking about it in, in, in anyway i'll be talking about things that are there in the center of the screen okay so don't get um confused by that all right so let's start let's jump right in um so i've created a small a mind map kind of a thing for you to explain what is solidity all right so now um the things that other series start with the things that other series start with would be like uh, variables data types and all those i will cover those things i will cover those things from video number two onwards like variables data types and functions and you know uh, the special keywords all of those different things but in this video i just want to tell you what solidity is like from a very basic level why are we even using solidity and what is it exactly so this mind map will help you explore or understand things really well so uh solidity okay and the first branch goes here it's a high level programming language now high level basically uh, everybody knows what high level programming language is um if you're if you're if you've been following my channel you've been learning golang you've been learning node.js like javascript and all those things right so uh now this a uh, solidity language has a lot of influence from c++ python javascript and that shows i mean when you start using solidity you'll see that there's there's a lot of things that have been borrowed from these uh, programming languages and what i have also found and which somebody no, somehow nobody talks about is that it's very similar to a uh, golang a lot of concepts are very similar to golang and the reason for that is that it's a statically typed language so if you know golang really well uh, i can tell you uh, you won't have a lot of trouble working with solidity <laughs> because it's also statically typed people coming from javascript might have problems working with solidity right but people coming from typescript might not have problems working with uh, solidity and people coming from golang will definitely not have any issues working with solidity only a few concepts are new but once you get the hang of it you'll start understanding because even the way you write syntax many times like you know um, uh, saying that this is an int all of those things like in javascript you don't have to say that this is an int this is a string or or, or, or those kind of things right but with golang uh, with golang and with solidity you have to uh, tell the language that this is this particular type that basically means statically typed uh, language so um and and ma in many places the syntax is going to be same and also there's a very big similarity is that structs like we how we use in golang the structs are almost same in solidity so you can create your own complex data types your own data types you can invent using structs which is very similar to golang now if you don't go no no golang just ignore whatever i've said right whenever uh, the parallels that i'm drawing just ignore what i've said but since a lot of uh, people on my channel have been learning golang and solidity is uh, something that i'm teaching new so i was just using those references if you don't know golang not a problem you don't have to worry about struct right now we'll go into that in uh, in depth later on okay so all you have to remember is it's statically typed in the sense that uh it you have to define the types properly you can't just say that this is just a, a variable and you can uh, let the language decide things on its own you can't do that now um solidity the runtime for solidity is an ethereum virtual machine this is quite important and we'll talk about these things right we'll talk about these things but for now let me tell you about the data types so there are some new data types that you get with solidity you get integer strings all of those things different things booleans and all of that but you also get um 
two major important data types one is called addresses the other is called contracts and this is where the entire game is and this is in the sense you'll be using these quite often to work with solidity to create smart contracts so let's talk about smart contracts after a while but for now just you have to understand that you will be seeing this very often you'll be seeing addresses and contracts and if you have watched any uh, solidity uh, series or videos in the past of uh, from any other youtube channel you might be wondering why, why is somebody writing a contract or, or addresses what does what does it mean it's basically these new data types that solidity provides you with okay so don't get confused when we use these later on but we'll talk about it more often uh, more in the de on, in details in the upcoming videos and uh, most importantly it's object oriented uh, slash contract oriented so the uh, like, like you have objects and classes in other programming languages right class classes and all you will have uh, contracts and it'll be basically contract oriented so you'll be seeing basically a lot of contracts everywhere uh, in the programming language and it's best suited for obviously because you have contracts it is a first citizen it is contract based and uh, you know that's what you build with with uh, solidity so that's why it's best suited for creating contracts obviously because it has contracts al already as part of the programming language you don't have to make a separate thing called contract right so if you had to make these contracts with golang let's say you had to define your own contracts what what a contract is uh, from from scratch and then you had to probably uh, you know use those but here it gives you a contract as a data type from beginning itself it makes it very easy for you to start creating your own contracts and you can inherit those contracts very easily so um, contracts a lot of people have built their own contracts and they're there for you to use and you can use inheritance to start using those, those contracts very easily you can also use them via libraries like for example with golang with javascript you import things into your program right the other third party libraries here also you have a same similar con uh, concept with libraries or you can use those functions using inheritance both of these are completely valid ways of working and we'll uh, use them uh, I'll, sh I'll show you how to use both of these and then you'll uh, you know understand where to use what or, or you can probably use them interchangeably anything that you want all right so just to remember you have inheritance and you have libraries with uh, solidity now um, you'll hear this term called smart contracts so you'll create contracts right you, you're using solidity but you'll hear this term smart contracts very often it's basically the entire logic uh, entire file with complete business logic is going to be called a smart contract you can deploy your smart contracts as is uh, to testnet mainnets we'll talk about those later on what they mean basically all you have to remember is that the business logic uh, you know where the business logic resides is basically going to be called as a smart contract all right now uh, there are a couple of environments like very commonly used environments that people work with you can either install it as an npm uh, on your local host machine or docker you can work through docker with solidity or the most commonly used these days in the, in the modern times is remix because uh, you'll see why because it gives you a nice interactive kind of a way to work with solidity when you create these functions you'll get those nice uh, buttons for those functions to interact with those functions and uh, with remix um, the experience of working with solidity is really enhanced you just don't get the same experience with uh, vs code and uh, you know working through npm and docker right so remix is something that i'll uh, at least in the beginning in the beginning few videos we'll work with remix uh, later on we may shift to our own uh, local environment but in the beginning we'll be working with remix because that's the most beginner friendly ide then let's talk about the runtime ethereum virtual machine now ethereum virtual machine basically helps you to uh, run the code okay and it's sandboxed for complete security you get you get a sandbox with evm and it's also completely isolated all right now uh, evm has a few concepts only these three concepts is what we're going to talk about in this video in the upcoming videos as and when we need these things we'll talk about these because i don't want to burden you with too much information right now so there are concepts like storage memory and stack right instruction sets message calls delegate call code libraries logs create deactivate self destruct pre compiled contracts now please remember that without knowing these concepts right without knowing these concepts also you can start creating your own smart contracts and become a solidity developer and you will find many people who don't know these concepts and they're still solidity developers but because all the, the three most important ones you need to know are these three uh, concepts but um, as you know we we like going into depth so we learn all these concepts uh, but we won't learn them in this video right now we'll learn them a little uh, later into our journey right because um, I don't want you to get bogged down with so much information without having without seeing any practical stuff anyhow so you have accounts with EVM and 
now it might not make sense to you but when we run those co- uh, the, the code let's say when we will create a code code in our uh, or, or contract in our remix ide you will understand this more much more so there are external types of accounts and there are contract accounts external accounts are basically owned by or operated by human beings which which will have public private key pairs right so when you uh, create your own account let's say on uh, metamask which is always created by you as a human being you will get a private and public key right but then there are accounts that can be created using the contract in remix id so they are controlled by code so the code creates a new account and that to that particular account you can send from your metamask you can send money or uh, you know whatever ethereum whatever to to that particular account so there are two types of accounts you have to remember that one is the public private key pairs accounts which are created by human beings and controlled by human beings the other one is created or controlled by the code itself okay um, using um you know yeah uh, using solidity basically the the contracts that you will create so the next thing is transactions so tra- whenever you will hear the word transactions a lot whenever somebody is saying transaction just basically means some message payload currency anything flowing from one account to another account that's always a transaction in solidity solidity is all about transactions so you must have uh, understood that you know many, many people say that web 2.0 is was all about understanding how to communicate between human beings and web 3.0 is all about transactions or how do you value things uh you know on the over the internet so that's why transactions is very important that's why solidity is the first choice for web 3.0 because it takes transactions into account takes contracts into account because the whole blockchains uh, they work on smart contracts and contracts right which contracts basically smart contracts are basically things that determine how a blockchain must behave so you are not having a central authority that ensures that this is the way the blockchain will work we'll, the smart contract itself is the authority right so if you and i will be dealing together without any central uh, mi- middleman between us we are ha- going to have the smart contract to guide us on how to have that transaction okay i hope that makes sense even if it doesn't make sense don't worry i'll explain to you in much greater detail okay for now you just need to understand the difference between accounts and you have a new concept called transactions and then you have something called as a gas fee now this is a fee that's charged so that the machine has to deal with only few dollars now gas uh fee has a lot of different contexts it's used in many different ways but in the context of using when we are just programming our uh, you know programs by the way i'll explain to you gas gas fees all of that in much more details uh, and in different contexts but for this context you just need to remember that this is just a fee it's a little bit of fee uh, in gwei wei so i'll talk about wei gwei and eth uh, these are also three concepts that you need to know so it's basically think about it as a very small amount of ethereum that's always charged a fee so that uh, you know the machine that's processing the information has to deal with few tasks because uh, you know you will define how much gas is required and so the people can say that i'll you know give the, i'm able ready to give this much gas for this kind of a transaction so that person will be given more priority so the more gas you'll give the more priority you'll get your uh, processing will get uh, and if the if the machine has you know limited amount of capacity and it wants to process some tasks the task with the maximum amount of gas will be given more priority so uh, it's quite possible that you didn't understand what i just said about gas and it's possible that you probably did understand uh, what i said so if it if you did understand understand it that's really good if you didn't understand it no no problem because we will be talking about gas in different contexts what it does we'll be talking about transactions much more accounts much more right but i just want to tell you like wanted to give you a very uh, you know 10000 feet perspective overview of what accounts are what transactions are and what gas fee is uh, then there will be some concepts like i said storage memory stack instruction set and message calls uh call code libraries logs create self uh, deactivate and self destruct and pre compiled contracts that we'll talk about in the upcoming videos and not right now uh in this video actually what i want to show you was something more interesting which uh, will interest you right now because it's an a sample actual co- solidity code uh that actually works we'll learn about how to make it work in the upcoming videos but for now just i just want to show you the syntax It's okay if you don't understand the code right now too much no problem but I just want to show you what it looks like. So uh, the first line you'll always see if you if you find a code uh, like a solidity code or contract on the internet what you'll find is you'll find this kind of way uh, the first line the first line is basically spdx license identifier so you're just saying always that this is the license right and many people would use an mit license this guy has used a gpl 3.0 uh, license and uh, solidity is all about uh, open source all about everybody uh, like complete transparency everybody seeing every, everything everybody knows everything about each other so it's all going to be open so that's why you'll put a license there it's mit license or gpl 3.0 license right 
Then you have pragma solidity. That means basically that your solidity version is between 0.416 and between 0.90, which has breaking changes. So 0.90 and above will have breaking changes. So that's why you want to be between these uh, versions. All right. So these two first two lines are pretty simple. The first is the license identifier. The second is you know which version of solidity are you using? Then you have your contract simple storage. Now this is how you define your contracts, right? So we had. A few, a few minutes back, I told you that contracts are first citizens in Solidity and everything is around contracts. It's a contract oriented language, object oriented or contract oriented language. So this is a small level of abstraction of a contract. This is what a contract looks like. The contract is going to be called simple storage. It will have an integer. So uh, as you can see, you know, you have to define that it's an integer and the integer is called stored data. Uh, and this is your variable that you're using inside this. Uh, contract. Now the contract can have multiple functions. It has one function, it has another function. So all you need to understand right now is that there are two functions. One is called set, the other is called get. Okay. So these two functions here uh, is what we have inside this contract right now. Now set is going to accept uh, an integer and um, the name of that integer uh, or the argument, sorry, the name of that argument is x. So set is going to accept an argument called x into this function. It's a public function. And store data, this um, variable that we've defined as an integer out here, is going to become equal to x. Okay, so uh, I'm, I'm explaining to you the insights of the functions. If you don't understand it, no problem. You, all you have to understand in this video is that um, you have these two lines, the license and uh, solidity line. And then you have something called as contracts that you'll be seeing often. And the contracts would usually have inside them functions. And in this video, at least in this uh, particular uh, case, we have an integer. We have defined a variable called store data. And we have defined two functions. One is called a set function, one is called a get function. The set function will have an integer uh, accepting an argument called x, which is an integer. It's a public function. We'll talk about public. We'll talk about view uh, in, in uh, you know, in the future, we'll talk about returns also. And so we have stored it as ULX. But uh, just as a, as a as an overview, public basically means it's public. View basically means the read function because it's just returning stored data, right? It's not writing anything. And it returns. It is returning something, right? This function does not return something. It's just setting the value. That's why it's called set. This, were, this function is getting the value. And it returns an integer. Okay, so with JavaScript, you don't have to write what kind of um, data type is being returned. You, don't, you never have to mention that, right? What kind of data type is being returned. But with uh, Golang, with Solidity, which are static type languages, you always have to mention the kind of data type that is that the function is returning. That makes the function, the, the programming language very stable, uh, it reduces the number of errors and issues that you can have, it becomes very easy to debug. And uh, it helps you debug while compiling itself, it will tell you all the errors. So that's why uh, you, you want to have a statically typed language. I mean, I prefer them all the time. So uh, this is what this function is doing, right? So there's, there's a set function, there's a get function, set function accepts something, get function is not, not accepting something, there are just empty brackets. It is a public function, get function also public. This is a view function and it turns something, returns an integer, which is basically stored data. And set function basically creates, uh, initializes stored data with the value of x, which it, re it receives, okay? And earlier in this contract, we had defined a variable called stored data. So I hope this code is little, uh, you're, you're getting more comfortable with seeing what a Solidity code looks like. We'll start from very small, simple examples from in the next video also, and we'll talk about more concepts, and then we'll slowly start building up our knowledge. So I'm expecting there'll be like probably 25, 30 videos, at least, uh, till the time we are, you know, building up our concepts. Till then, the first three, four videos are going to be very basic and very simple, right? Even if you don't have any, uh, a lot of programming experience, not a problem. We are going to talk about everything in detail. We're going to talk about variables, data types, functions, return values, public, what is public, all different types of keywords, all of that we'll be, uh, we'll be uh, talking about. So if you haven't subscribed to this channel already, do subscribe to this channel. Uh, because I have more than 100 videos on Golang on my channel. Golang is an awesome programming language to learn uh, if you want a great job in 2022 and you want a high, very high pay rise. Uh, if you all, all, all are already a JavaScript developer or Node.js developer and you want to become uh, a, a serious um, you know, backend developer, then Golang is the way to go. Subscribe to my channel, learn Golang and get a great job. And also we'll have awesome content like this, like Solidity and Rust, because I love Rust, I love Python as well. So we'll have a lot of content around that. So do subscribe to the channel and thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.